In this video, we're going to be focusing on a double exposure effect. And this typically involves two different types of photos. More or less, one is clipped to a boundary of another, and then it seeps through showing its own textures and whatever's in the image inside the other photo, if that makes sense. So to visualize this, obviously, the fox you see here has a bit of the trees and snow, snowy kind of trees mixed in with its fur. So what I want to do is recreate something similar to this in the this video and we'll kind of get into using texture brushes as well as masks, masking techniques as, and filters as we go through and create this effect. So your results might vary and that's okay. The key thing here is just to mask, get a good mask of the fox itself. And then from there you can clip another image to the mask and sort, sort of blend things in one by one and see how they look in the final piece. So let's get started. Uh, this will be kind of my my basis, but I'm going to more or less create a new composition just so it's something that you can follow along with. So to start, I'm gonna place the same file. If you're a pro subscriber, you have access to these files, of course. So in it are a few images I've sourced, the primary one being the tree image, which we're after here, and the fox, which is what we need to crop and mask and then in you know make the whole double exposure effect revolve around so i'm going to place this fox image first on our document and we'll probably just click once to go full size it should be your document can be the size of this image if you want i'm going to end up scaling back i think just to the sake of making the fox central inside the image itself so for now we'll leave it like this just scaling it up to this document size so the first thing I want to do is mask out the fox itself. And this will be more of the tedious kind of task because we need to get in, if you can see pretty close, there's some hairs that are going to be tough to get, but we can get pretty close with Affinity Photo and its refined selection tools. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that now. This part will probably be sped up, but you can follow along just the same. The key tool I'll use here to start is the selection brush tool. And then once I have a selection, I'm going to hit this refine button and go back and refine things as we go. Okay, with a fairly rough selection in place, we can go ahead and start to refine this. You may have noticed during our fast forwarded part that I was adding and subtracting the selection. And this is, can be done using a modifier key or option on a Mac or Alt on a PC. And basically when you're adding, you're in this mode to the top left here when you're making a selection. So you're adding a selection to this composition. If you were to just come up here and click subtract, this would work the same way as we're going there. A quick and easy way though is just to use a key modifier. So if you just hit option or alt, you should be fine to go ahead and subtract while you're doing the add mode, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. If not, don't worry. Okay, so with that done, I wanna go ahead and refine this mask. And this is probably one of my favorite features of any Affinity product. The masking is pretty well renowned. So I'm gonna increase the brush size and just go around that perimeter of the fox and mainly just brush where I see larger hairs in place. And I want the, the tool to kind of do the work for me and find those hairs and make a better selection in the end based off of what I'm painting. Um, that first stroke though looked a little rough, so I'm gonna track back and try again. Get your brush just up to the edge, I would say, and get as much as you can. Don't worry too much if it's just impossible to grab some of these hairs because in the end it's just it really is impossible to find and get some of these things but we can try our best here. In this mode you can use these sliders as well. I tend to just brush in the mask making it a little refined that way. It just seems to work better for me. Uh, your results might vary though so go ahead and experiment. Okay. 
Okay, I think we can roll with this, create the output to be a new layer with a mask. So hopefully this will mask out the background for us and just create a new layer based off of what we selected. Let's see if that works. It did, okay, great. So we have a new layer based off our old Fox image here. We still have that Fox images available to us. Affinity was nice enough, or Affinity Photo was nice enough to duplicate that file and just give us a basis to work off of here. But you'll see some, some stuff that kind of carried over in that process. We can refine this mask further if we really want to. Um, I'm gonna do it the kind of the old fashioned way with just a typical brush and a darker color. So I'm gonna switch to black up here in my colors and just start to brush away some of this stuff manually. Um, increase the opacity if you haven't. Hardness can be pretty low, it doesn't need to be high. Um, but some of these spots just aren't gonna translate into the image well for us, even though the image itself is gonna be pretty rough looking. I just wanna clean it up just a tad, so you might do the same. as. So around these sharper edges on the ears, the, the hairs are definitely shorter, so it kind of makes more of a, a tighter looking end uh, to the pigment in the photo. So I wanna go ahead and increase the hardness on the brush just around these portions. Kind of makes it a little bit more realistic when we go ahead and mask. And I'm just knocking some of this back just to get it a little more stable state so when we do mask it off and add a new background it will kind of blend in the right way hopefully so i think we're looking okay uh, some of this is just you could spend all day doing and in some cases that makes all the difference but for the purpose of this video i'm just kind of translating uh, the general idea of a double exposure uh, to you so you can maybe apply this in your own projects so i think we'll roll with that not 100% perfect, but it is working. So let's go move on. Fox. So I'm gonna save this layer below it just and lock it there. Um, the main image though, I am gonna scale back just to be a little smaller. And you notice it still has some remnants of the image we masked before because the canvas was a little larger or the image was a little larger than the canvas. So again, I'm gonna grab the brush and just brush these away. You can set the hardness pretty high and opacity all the way up here just to do it in one felt swoop. That should do the trick. Great. So if you wanted to maintain the mask, you could right now and just leave it as is. If you really wanted to uh, keep the layer without the mask and just have it be kind of a cropped looking version, you can just right click on the layer and rasterize it. It should make its own own layer that's just kind of clipped to what it actually is. It's kind of a, a neat trick to do if you just need this image and nothing else further. It is destructive edit though, so you can't go back and edit that mask anymore. So that's something to take into account. Always, I always typically duplicate the layer just for safety sake. It's just one of those habits that's worth forming for this kind of work. So you always can roll back if you want to. Although there is great history uh, recalling in Affinity Photo, so you can always use the history panel to go very all the way back to what you did, and it should do the trick as well. So it looks like it actually clipped the ear when I did that, so I might revert that. Come back up here, get our brush tool, go back to white on our main color, and brush back that ear just a tad. Looks like I, I went a little too far. Let me go softer here. Both ears, actually. And a quick trick to toggle the colors up here, if you press X on your keyboard, those will toggle. So it's kind of nice when you're doing this. Okay. We'll stop with the masking portion there. I'm gonna save it down and we'll roll with that. I'll probably just use the mask layer for now and just so we can edit it if we ever need to. Okay, I'm gonna bump it to the bottom and the next part, we'll actually just add a base color background here. 
And I just like to make a square and make it the size of the document. You can do it any which way you want to in terms of adding a fill to the background. Uh, this is my preferred way though. Uh, okay, so we have the background. I'll name that background. And I want it to be kind of a lighter color. Something like this, like a tan should work. I think that'll be okay. And the effect I'm after is more of a textured background look. So we have brushes available to us that will allow us to make this look that way. Besides the basic in this panel here, I'm going to go to texture and you can experiment with which ones you like best here, but I'm probably going to use pretty large size of something here. That's just a little bit darker than the background color. Uh, so we can actually pick that color if we want to, and then just make it a little darker. By default, it'll create a new pixel layer for you. The assistant's here saying that that's what it's done. Uh, it looks like this color needs to be a bit darker though. So I'm gonna do that. Let's see how it gets along here. So we have that texture. It's kind of more of a canvas looking texture, so that's not quite what I'm after. I want something a little more grungy. So I'm gonna go back to our brushes and find something else. That's, that's okay. Some of these are very subtle, so it'd be hard to, hard to see, uh, but we can experiment. And a good tip is to probably use more than one brush style just to give it a more dynamic looking effect. I think this one might be the winner. So you could kind of sporadically point and click around the document just to make this effect, give it some texture in the background. We just want it to be just very, very textured, but not like in your face. That's what I'm after. And then you can add some of these more bolder spots, increase the size, decrease the size, kind of make it dynamic in that nature. Besides those though, I'm going to undo those five clicks. I'm going to add a new layer and add them to that so that I can alter those if needed. And you can increase the size and decrease the size with the bracket keys on your keyboard. That's how I typically do it with brushes. And if you ever wanted to edit this brush, right click the brush, hit edit brush. The main thing I would edit here is the rotation. So you can rotate the whole brush to be some different direction, which is useful to make it a little more dynamic as you go. So that's something to take into account. I think we'll roll with this, probably just remove those two and bring this opacity down some. I just want a varied effect back there, nothing crazy. So I think that should work for now. So the next thing I want to do is add our other tree image to the mix. And that's going to also be part of the background image as well, as well as the double exposure effect on the Fox. So we have this tree image. I'm going to just point and click and scale it. And this will be part of the background I'm going to have. So I'll probably just do some sort of blend mode, maybe, maybe luminosity and then bring the opacity way down. Great. So something like that. And then with the Fox layer, we need to actually bring that image in again. And I'll just kind of do the same process here, just adding it the size of the document. And then I'm going to bring it above the Fox. And to create the effect we're after, I need to drop it just below the Fox layer. You see how it's highlighting right to the right in the layers panel. That masks it around the Fox itself, which is exactly what we're after. The main thing I want to do now is just start to strip away that mask. So we have our tree layer here, trees. And then we, we made a new mask by clicking this mask button here. And I want to have a dark color oh, this is my brush color. And I'll increase the size with the bracket keys. And you can come in, probably want a basic brush for this. Just to get a different style, probably increase or decrease the hardness almost all the way opacity down a bit and we have to increase the size again so then you can start to brush away bits of this image you can get some of the fox back but the trees remain might go with that um, next we need to really just kind of toy with actual photo effects so make the fox image itself a little desaturated i don't want it to be quite so orange as foxes naturally are. So I'm going to grab that layer 
and go down and add an adjustment to it and add an HSL filter. That's going to go, we need to crop it to just that image. So let's drop it like we did that tree image before. And in this case, I'm going to just bring the saturation back and possibly increase the luminosity. So this is affecting both the tree image and the fox. And we can make that different by just affecting the fox by bringing this HSL adjustment below the tree layer we've added here. So this is that layer. So you'll see some of the orange from the fox come through and that's okay. I kind of want the fox to almost appear black and white, but not quite. And we can amp up the look and feel of the fox by continuing on adding maybe some levels to make it a little more contrast. For the levels, can we do a gamma? We can. Okay, so let's delete that second one. I didn't mean to add the second one there. Let's go back to our levels adjustment and add gamma back. It emphasizes the whites in the image itself, for lack of a better explanation there. Might decrease this image. Maybe we'll adjust it with some sort of blend mode too and see how it looks. These kind of make it look a little too far over the edge. That one's not bad, but it's just not quite dark enough. So I think we'll stick with normal for now. And the trees below it or above the effects we've just done, we can add their own effects as well. We just need to add it above those. So in this case, we can increase the HSL saturation or decrease it depending on what we're after. Make it green. We'll roll with something like this. That's more or less the effect I'm after. The edges of the fox aren't quite as prominent as I'd like, so I might brush away some of these trees just around the edge with a dark color here. Let's see how that works for us. And you could do the same on these effects on the fox layer as well, the ones we applied. So if you brush in some of that, bring back the orange perhaps, might look okay. And a neat thing we could do with the trees maybe is have them come out of the fox a little bit. So let's try that. Maybe I'll be on the mask for the fox and brush away some of it so the trees come back through. We'll actually add to it, excuse me. So we want it to be a white color in the brush. And you'll see this kind of take place here. It's adding black color though. So I'm gonna actually revert that and see what's wrong with that. Okay, that's why it's, it's the image of the fox that's making that happen. So what we need to do is kind of just go around the edge with the trees a little more. I think this is just how it's going to have to be because we need, if we were to mask this layer, we can get some of those trees, but it's going to bring back some of the black in the original image of the fox, as you can see here. So that's kind of what we're running into the issue there. So you can really fine tune this if you want and get at least a subtle effect of that kind of idea. But overall, it's not looking 100% great. So I'm going to see what I can do if I clean this up a bit. So I think I'm going to revert that. I want it just to clip to the fox itself and we'll, we'll roll with that one. It makes a little more sense. So we're seeing more or less the tree image come in from the background of the fox. 
we've got this effect going on. We can make this a little more enhanced in terms of the fox itself, possibly by adding an effect around the fox that is an outer shadow, but it's gonna be a big one. So I wanna increase the radius quite a bit. In fact, that effect isn't quite what I'm after. So I'm gonna undo that and just add it manually. So what we can do is add a new pixel base layer, add it below it and get just a darker tone. Maybe sample the image here, holding option or alt on your keyboard and it should be in your paintbrush panel there. And then we can decrease the hardness and opacity quite a bit and just paint back some of the dark shadow we're after, maybe decrease that color more just behind the fox. Just want to emphasize. And then from there you can decrease the opacity. Possibly duplicate that layer. Maybe group those and do a clipping mask on those. Maybe brush away some of that color, the darker color. I think it should be a little bit lighter. Very subtle effect I'm after there. And I think the fox, it's desaturated. Our original image is a little more saturated. We also have a, a different blend mode going on in this one. I think I want to maintain that possibly. So for the fox itself, I'm going to grab that layer and set a different blend mode. Color burn, I think, is what I used. And that gives it a very very contrasted look, uh, but also brings out the red tones in that image. So it's definitely more vibrant. And we could even do the same for the trees in the very background, not so much on the fox, but the ones in the very back. So this one could be more of a color burn if we want. And you'll notice it's kind of clipping through the mask or through the, the fox here in the, in the mouth region. So we can even go as far as to mask that away if we want to. So I'll get a mask on that background image layer and get a brush with a darker color and just come back through and paint away those sections that we don't want the trees. And I think I'll just clean up the mask of the fox a little bit more too. So come back through with a white brush, just bring him back a little bit. Same with the trees, probably just do away with some of those. And then if we want to enhance this even further, we can hit us command click on the layer itself. I'm going to create a new layer and make a new fill. That's kind of an orange orange effect. So but it's going to look like black right now, but I want it to be kind of this color. I'm just trying this out as a idea here. If we can mask this to the Fox, I lost my selection there. If we can mask this to this, selection we can do something like that and then apply a new blend mode to this so it's even more vibrant maybe something like that but then bring back that color with some opacity and you can see where i'm after here um, that's kind of the effect i'm after more or less a monotone image uh, which means more or less one color uh, but still vibrant so maybe i'll change the background color even just to be something different there something kind of bright, but still toned down. That's kind of a cool effect right there. So as you can see, it's a ton of trial and error. Um, yours will probably look dramatically different than mine and that's perfectly acceptable. That's the beauty of this is everything's going to have its own look and feel. I think we're going to go probably back to more of a neutral tone in the background. And you want to make sure it's kind of a lighter 
looking image just so this contrast comes through and I think that's the very end of this video if we've gone long enough I think to tweak that I would definitely invite you to take yours even further than this you can add even more images if you want to in this and then just enhance this effect even more like adding objects as opposed to just nature and animals um, all that stuff could be within a double exposure and create a really nice looking effect uh, this was the demo file which is kind of my first attempt at it but this was the second one here which we just did i think i like this version a little bit more so definitely follow along if you can and see what you come up with and if you have something to share feel free to share it in the comments i look forward to seeing it